Hi there. Welcome to Dear Cyber Sue. Today I have a question from Carolyn, so I'm going to read it out to you. This is just part of her, her question to me to save time here. Hi, Dear Cyber Sue. My boyfriend re recently broke up with me. I miss the guy I thought he was. Now that I've had time to think about it, I realize I spent way too much time giving myself to the wrong man. How do I stop dating guys that I can't have and have to keep fighting for? Well, this is a really, really good question, Carolyn, because this is something that a lot of people do, and not just women. And sometimes this happens because we want what we can't have, and sometimes it happens because we just really like the person. We like everything about them, and we try to make it so that it works for us, because we can see ourselves with them. You're feeling lonely because you're in a relationship with somebody, but you're not really in a relationship with them. They give you sort of passive little pieces of themselves to keep you interested, but they're not completely focused on a relationship with you. The trick is to learn how to decipher this very early. There's so many red flags. When somebody says they're too busy or they see you and it's kind of like on their terms, maybe even last minute, booty calls, all those things that, that chalk up to that somebody's not really 100% there, you have to look for these signs. They're usually really obvious, but a lot of people just push them to the side and don't want to answer to them because they're hoping things will change. And that is the biggest situation that, that why people continue to do this. So in answer to your question, Carolyn, you do have a certain type of person that you like. Maybe you want somebody who's a little bit more extroverted than you are. There's all sorts of things that you might be looking for in a person that isn't really quite compatible with you. Maybe there's things missing in yourself that you want to have and you're looking for it with these other people. You really want to be with somebody that you have a lot in common with. You know when they're there for you. You don't have to push so hard. You don't have to ask so many questions. They're calling you. They're texting you. They're making dates happen. And that's what you have to do. You have to stop sort of trying to control the relationship and being the one that makes everything happen. Because if you stop doing that, maybe they will start to be the one that is the assertive one. Sometimes with anybody in a relationship, if there's one person that's stronger and is pushing for the, the partnership more than the other, sometimes people just relax and kind of let the other person take the reins. And that might be what's happening and why it's continually happening to you. Because you're the one that's kind of making everything possible. You're making it happen. You're telling them how you feel. Step back. I want you to try that on your next couple of dates. Don't text them after, don't call them after, don't do anything, have a date with them, just talk, make sure it's a mutual conversation back and forth. Don't try to fix them or help them with things. Just be a fun person on the date and let them be the one that contacts you again and see what happens. Try it, it's not gonna hurt. That's what I suggest that you do to change up the pattern of what's not working for you. Because every time that you have to keep going back and forth over the same things again, it starts to be very hurtful. And you start to feel like, well, what's wrong with me? Why am I doing this? But that's the bottom line. You are in charge of it, so you are allowing it. So now you, it's up to you to change that, and you can do it. So don't be in, in control and being in charge of everything and making it easy for someone to say, yeah, well, maybe I can see you on Wednesday, or yeah, well, let's see how it goes, maybe next Friday. Don't make it like that. Just let them be the one, and you'll know. You don't have to question if they like you, because if they don't contact you, you have your answer. Next. Thank you for contacting me, Carolyn, and I'll po post the rest of that up on my blog next week. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to Dear Cyber Zoo. Please keep your questions coming. Love to hear from you.